see there. All right, hello, hello everybody. Today we are joined by Peter Yeo. He is from British Columbia and hello, welcome. Thank you, thank you for inviting. Yes, very good. I know I found you on Instagram, like I found a lot of my guests for this podcast, and I see that you were recently, well, not recently injured, you were injured in 2017, correct? Yes, correct. Correct. Now, I was saw, were you injured in a fall, just like you were just kind of, did you lose, like, did you faint, or what was your injury? Yeah, so it was such an unfortunate fluke uh, accident. Yeah. I was basically just uh, uh, fell down on my standing height. Uh, lost balance. Um, the impact itself wasn't that great, but the problem was uh, my spinal canal is genetically uh, uh, shallower than others. Oh. So uh, the possibility of spinal cord injury was uh, higher in my oh. case. So oh. my, uh, when my uh, head got uh, hit by the concrete pillar, uh, even though the impact wasn't that great, uh, my neck was hyperextended pretty far, uh, and then yeah, I uh, got the spinal cord injury. Then. Wow. So when you had your injury, did you have an idea of what happened to you? Did you go, yeah, I must have broken my neck, or were you confused about what had happened to you? Totally confused. As yeah. soon as I was on the floor, uh, I noticed I couldn't move anything. Oh, Basically, yeah. The only thing I could do was blinking my eyes. That was it. So oh, were you, did you have friends there and were you immediately rescued and brought to the hospital then? Yeah, I had an ambulance uh, came right away and then I was taken to the hospital. I saw that, you know, you went to Victoria General there and how long were you there for? I, I know for a lot of people, it seems like three to four months, but maybe you were there longer? Or? Well, actually, uh, I brought to the Victoria General, but uh, I wasn't there for a long time. I was only there for few hours and oh, okay. um, they contacted the uh, the hospital in Vancouver mm. which is bigger and the specialized uh, okay. especially the spinal cord center there and then okay. uh, luckily there was a, a spinal cord surgeon who uh, wished to have a spinal cord decompression surgery right away mm -hmm. so I was flown with the chopper and then went to Vancouver General Hospital and then I had a spinal cord decompression surgery uh, in a few hours. Okay. Um, basically what it was is uh, because um, I had a spinal cord injury because the spinal canal was so narrow, um, we needed some room for the spinal cord to swell so it can heal. But mm -hmm. at that moment, it wasn't enabled because it was basically trapped inside the spinal canal. So oh, wow. basically, uh, the surgeon removed uh, uh, cervical C2 to C6, I believe. Okay. And then uh, they uh, installed the uh, fusion there. And then wow. uh, in order for the spinal uh, cord to swell in the mm -hmm. uh, bigger space. And then uh, in order for the spinal cord to get healed. That's a very yeah. significant surgery. Did they do the incision from the back of your neck or from the front? Back. Back, yeah. So it seems that, you know, I know we're going to talk about your surgery in a little bit that you had, but with your your initial mobility, like right after your injury, what was like your feeling and mobility, your sensation mobility? It was uh, com complete um, Asia A. So that means uh, I couldn't feel, I couldn't move anything below uh, neck level. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, basically it was a complete paralysis. That's tough. C4, well, it's like C3 technically for that mobility, or what was like, what did they say you had functioning as at that time? Well, basically I couldn't really feel or move below um, top of my shoulder. Okay, okay. I mean, first few days, it was really tough because I was shocked and Everything was so new, and I was panicking. It's crazy. It really, yeah, yeah. yeah. I know that feeling so well. So you were also, you know, at the time, how old were you when you were hurt? Like 32? 32, I think. Yeah. 
you know, when you get injured at any age, it's hard, but I know, um, it seems like, you know, since your age from 32 to 36 now, it seems like you've been, the transition home is difficult, isn't it? What was it like when you, when you went home right after, you know, your injury after a few months and they always send you home and it's really hard. I feel like that was those first few months. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, luckily, uh, in Vancouver, they, uh, have a rehab facility called GF Strong. Okay. Um, the one place for uh, every uh, patient with the spinal cord injury uh, from across the whole BC, British Columbia, they all gather in that place. So it's very specialized. That's so great. it's like an uh, inpatient uh, uh, facility for spinal cord injury patients. That's nice. I love um, those. I was there about six months before I came back home. So with, with, with during that time, um, they were able to uh, give me some training. Exactly. Yep. Some uh, coaching and I was able to get some rehab too. Um, mm -hmm. uh, they have a special team dedicated for you, uh, including physiotherapists and occupation therapists. Thanks, nice, thanks. Nice. Um, all the nurses there are very specialized with the uh, complex care clients. So, yeah, I, I was really lucky to get all the knowledge and experience in that facility before I came back home. So, that was a uh, lucky part. But still, even with all that experience and knowledge, when you actually, you know, get out of the bubble and you know, you're facing reality and you're coming back home. Oh, that was I know. Still tough. It's like there, it's like your identity is so different. And it's so, <laughs> I think, hard to go home sometimes because you're a different person, but in your mind, you still think about how you used to be. And that's, I think, so hard. So I don't know. But um, I know I want to talk a little bit about your technology you're using right now, like your wheelchair and all that stuff. Did they send you home with all this cool technology or did you kind of figure out what you wanted to use as you went home? Well, so before I came home, um, I was able to uh, try, I mean, they teach you with the special device. I mainly use a sip and pop um, oh. device. It's basically you're uh, blowing air into the, this mouth control thing. Yep, yep. So basically it's a sip and pop. You uh, sip the air a little bit and then mm -hmm. uh, blow the air into it. And then it's very... Uh, sophisticated but like at the first I quite uh, needed a few training for at least like a week or so because it was very uh, tricky <laughs> but yeah. once you get it it's pretty uh, straightforward. Well the technology they have it's cool and on your headrest I see do you have the ability to drive or control your chair with your head at all? I know they no. have that technology. I know they have a headrest system they yeah. use that mm -hmm. and they have a button yeah. on the headrest but yeah. for, for me I was not comfortable with that system because uh, my spasticity level was pretty high. So I had a, quite a bit of a spasm. So just in accident, if I, you know, happened to my yeah. head, it would no. be really scary, right? So uh, no, you don't want your chair to go in the wrong direction. Yeah. <laughs> oh my God, I've been there. Okay, so I, I know when you, you had the surgery, so let's just talk about how you first came about how did you learn about the surgery for your arms? I know when you, a lot of people just kind of accept, the, you know, their, their situation and go, well, you know, I'll just live and have this mobility that I have. And it sounded like you wanted to research other possibilities, which I think is yeah. great. So tell us about that and how you found the surgery and what it is. Well, at first, I mean, well, there was a moment that depressing moment, like you want to, you know, just give up everything. You're so depressed, but on the other side, I wanted to uh, keep uh, improve and uh, uh, recover as much as I could because uh, my level of injury is incomplete. So there is always a possibility on recovery on uh, different ways. Yes. So I hope and I wanted to try my best to like find the, uh, all the opportunity to try everything for recovery. Right? And there's so and, much more now than ever before, you know. Hmm. Oh, the other thing is I was super, super lucky to meet a uh, physiatrist. Uh, his name is Dr. Paul Winston. He's, he's a rehab medicine uh, specialist. And he is very, very uh, um, 
very uh, innovative and he wants to try everything. Mm -hmm. And I was uh, pretty much being uh, his guinea pig. <laughs> <laughs> you know, try every every possible uh, different procedure on me, and he helped me to try all kinds of different procedure uh, for in terms of upper extremity to help me uh, move my arms more. So there isn't just one; there were quite a few. Like okay, first, um, I was introduced to have a nerve transfer surgery. Okay, uh, yep. Is, uh, uh, I had a, a very active uh, deltoid uh, nerve. Yeah, yeah. So what it did, did was uh, use the uh, deltoid nerve as a donor and uh, move some, of, transplant some of the nerve into my tricep. Wow. So I use more of my tricep uh, to support, uh, for example, my, uh, my body with the tricep, with the arm. Because I had a, a bit of a bicep movement, but I had no tricep at all. So uh. I couldn't do anything uh, in terms of function with my arms at all. Oh my gosh. So, um, yeah, so I, it was a quick surgery. Cool. Um, you do both uh, arms, by the way, or just one arm? No, like none of the surgery that I had, I had a um, different uh, result right away. Okay. Everything just happening like long long like over time and okay. just gradual change not like after right at the surgery whoa i can do this now it, it wasn't like it takes that. Time. did the surgery did he do it on both arms or just yeah, the one okay okay that's cool was the was it different results on both arms just because you have a stronger arm than the other arm or yeah the, the, the funny thing is i am um you i'm right-handed okay but my left hand was uh, actually more mobile after the surgery. Interesting. But yeah. now I can use better on my right arm. So it's, you know, changes. <laughs> Spinal cord is a mystery still, very much so. And they're doing a lot of really great research. I mean, that's why I bring that up because, you know, I've been injured for so long. And I feel like in the last just five years, there's a lot of opportunities for people that are newly injured. Or, I know about the tendon transfer, which is really great. So I was even offered to get it. But I haven't done it. Yeah. Um, it works though. So what's the other surgery that you got done? Yeah, so the second one was uh, to improve my spasticity. So okay. it's called uh, cryotherapy. So basically, uh, I have a global spasticity problem, but the my main uh, problem area was my pack. So I have a strong internal rotation because my spasticity. So I always crawled like inward. Ooh. My arm would go, go inside. Yeah, that would not feel good. Yeah. So um, they inject the nitrogen gas on uh, pectoral nerve wow. to free the nerve. Huh. So kind of gives the uh, better. What should I say? Like uh, we can out the spasticity, so I can actually uh, move better. Nice, nice. Yeah. Wow. So the gas, it doesn't kill the nerve, but it makes it less strong. Mm -hmm. So there's the other option, which is actually they cut the nerve. Yeah, yeah. A, so uh, Dr. Winston was worried that um, if I go ahead and cut the nerve, it might give me a, a get, it, get out of the problem with the spasticity, but just in case, uh, in the future, I, you know, get recover and You never know. You don't want to slice yeah. and slice. Yeah. I lose that. So uh, there was another uh, procedure called cryotherapy, and there we cool. tried that. I was the very first candidate uh, was actually get got done on the cryo, on the pectoral muscle on both sides. Never heard of this before. This is why I'm like, wow, this is really, really cool. So did you try baclofen? Was that just not doing doing anything for you? So, baclofen, I'm already a uh, max dose. Okay. And okay. I'm, still, yeah. I'm quite a bit of a spastic. So there's another procedure that I'm waiting to get done is a baclofen pump. Oh, the pump, yes. 
So that's a good uh, surgery. And people love to get that. It really does calm your whole body mm -hmm. down. Yeah. So I'm waiting for that to be done. It, I, it actually it was supposed to be done last year, but because of the pandemic, the surgery has been delayed over and over. And so I'm you imagine waiting. everything's been delayed. It's so annoying. Yeah. Well, I hope that you get that surgery soon. Do you think you'll get it in 2022? I hope, really hope so. I hope yeah. you do. I really do. Wow, that surgery though that you had the cry. How do you can you spell it? It's cryo. What? How do you say it again? Cryotherapy. So cryo. We are. Why? I'm not too sure. Cryotherapy. But, I always think that means freezing, but that's that it. That, yeah, they froze it. I think so. Yeah. Wow. Well, that's interesting. If anyone wants to learn anything about this, if can they reach out to your doctor? If there's someone out there listening that maybe I, it's in Canada. Yeah, I actually have a information uh, pamphlet about that uh, procedure. Okay. So, okay. Yeah. We'll send people to your Instagram page. Maybe they can send you a message there if they want to talk maybe about it. Yeah. It's so interesting to me. So, okay. So can you move your arm a little bit at all or oh, you just got little shrugs a little bit yeah so have you tried any activity-based therapy yet like going to project walk have you thought about going to a place like that so because the i have a recovery change on my arms mm -hmm. uh, what i can do now is i can freely drive my chair using my arm now nice uh, good before I was uh, solely relying on the mouth control with the cement okay. mouth to drive the chair. Um, it was doable, but you know, in order for you to do that, like fine, like movement with the chair, where you want to slightly turn your chair a little bit, and you want to move a little bit of time with the sip and puff mouth control, it's very very tough to do that, but. Yeah. When, you, when I was able to use my arm, it was so much easier, so much better. Yeah, it so, really is. So now I'm mainly using my arm to drive the chair. I don't use the mouth control at, at all. That's amazing. That's amazing. Now, I see you're still doing therapy. Where are you going for your therapy right now? And where so, is it happening? Yeah. yeah, I go to the clinic called Neuromotion. That's it's a, yeah, special clinic for um, uh, spinal cord injury. Uh, Client, whoever has a paralysis, yeah. and then um, right now I'm mainly working on my lower extremity. Okay. So I go there once a week, and then um, I go on the treadmill. Nice, nice. I bet that feels so good. Yeah, yeah. yeah just and to then, get out of your chair and to feel your body moving, even though I know the sensation is not 100, but just to know and to feel it. Even though I, I would love to do it. I did it once about six years ago. And oh my God, I'm sorry. So you yeah. go once a week. So how, I mean, I don't need to pry, but do you pay for it out of pocket? Is it expensive or how do you, yeah? Well, it's not cheap, but yeah, I, it's worth I, it. do get, I do get a little bit of help from the, the health care. And then okay, I that's also good. have a, a employment um, benefit package that oh, helps me out. Too, but good, good. yeah, I mean, it, it, it's... It's not cheap, but definitely worth it. I've heard uh, this from so many people. You know, just because you're what eight, nine, ten, four years post injury, you should never stop doing rehabilitation or any kind of therapy. I I know people fifteen years post injury that still do therapy because you never know. You're an incomplete injury, right? Anything could possibly regenerate. And I've seen and heard um, really cool stories. So I was spying on your Instagram a little bit before we joined, and I saw that you sing. And you sing at your oh, church. And I think that's awesome, by the way. I am from a pest. I went to the Presbyterian Church here in White Bear Lake, Minnesota. Uh, and I and I used to sing in my choir. And I and I am very shy in my wheelchair, I have to admit. And I am curious, how did you get the courage to go back up and sing in front of everybody in your wheelchair? Because I think that's very admirable. Yeah, well, that was uh, one of the happiest uh, things that I was doing even before the injury. It was yeah. my thing every singing. time. Yeah. Yeah. Singing was my uh, main hobby. And uh, cool. it was really, I was al always happy to do it. And then the one thing that I missed was uh, able to sing after the injury because, but right after the injury, you don't have strength. Like you can barely talk. <laughs> I know. Yeah. I know. Mm -hmm. I was really lucky that usually on my level of injury, people ended up getting a trach on their throat. Yeah, they do. Yeah. 
in my case, I was super lucky that I didn't have to do it. Yeah, you have no scar, nothing there. Yeah. No scar, yeah. Nice. So um, I recovered really quick on the, on the breathing in areas. So awesome. that was super lucky. And um, yeah, it's just the thing that I really wanted to do yeah, um, yeah. Mm -hmm. was singing, if I can do it. And then as, as, as I'm doing more and more, I got better at it. Yeah. Then, so all the people that I used to perform, they were willing to come uh, over and then like uh, do the music with me. And I love it. I love it. You know, there's a lot of people that would never go back and sing again. So I think it's great that you did that. And I think everybody should learn a lesson from you. Don't stop doing what you love just because you're sitting in a wheelchair. So, oh, I, I, yeah, singing is very difficult for me. I can't sing that great. I always find I run out of breath. Does that happen to you more often? It's hard to keep your breath going as a singer. Yeah. Yeah. It's so, yeah. Do you have to practice more or anything like that at home by yourself? No, I just usually, I like, I don't like practice it. Mm -hmm. Often I just do it for fun now. That's like, cool. So it's more like a hobby now. Okay. Yeah, really. Um, well, I think it's cool that you're doing it, even if it's a hobby. And and I was gonna ask you too before I let you go. I'm kind of curious. What kind of what do you do for a living? Well, right now I'm just staying home, just okay. doing nothing, just mainly focus on my uh, uh, rehab and recovery. Okay. Um, but uh, before my injury, I was uh, managing the store. Oh. Uh, yeah, I was a uh, assistant manager in the, one of the grocery store in town. Okay, and they had good benefits, which is awesome. That's yeah. good. Mm -hmm. Smart and man. Mm -hmm. Before the pandemic, I was going there once a week just to do, try to find something that I could do. And then yeah, yeah. really good friend with the store manager and then he let me come in and uh, let me do some of the stuff that I could do with my eyes and mouth. Sweet, like sweet. Going over the ordering sheet, merchandising plan, all those yeah. kind of things. You got to keep your mind busy. You got to keep busy. I love it. Are you going to go back and do more of that, you think? Yeah, probably uh, start next year because I couldn't do it uh, ever since the pandemic happened. I couldn't do it anymore. Yeah, yeah. But hopefully I can go back there then do some of the work that I could do. So basically trying to find the things I can do in the living, it is, it's a really important thing. I love, yeah, any any little small, you know, bit of independence is so important when you're quadriplegic because mm -hmm. you need help with so much. I was gonna say, have you tried that OB feeding robot thingy or can, have you, you know, that thing that feeds you? Have you seen that thing? Are, are, are you able to feed yourself or I was curious. So there's another uh, thing called Mind Move. Mm -hmm. uh, it was a research study that, that I had, I had a, in the Neuromotion Clinic. I was uh, one of the participants for that study. Then I was doing it for over three months. Basically, um, they put that uh, stimulant, electric stimulant, yeah, um, with the note on... Uh, muscles on your arms and pecs and then it can help you uh, on uh, some of the functioning move like feeding or like extensioning your arm cool. and nice. it it can give you a uh, each electric stimulant on each uh, motion yeah yeah so maybe uh you can find the video on my instagram i would love to look for it yeah that sounds awesome yeah i will look for it and i yeah and i was just yeah no i was only was asking only because you know independence and stuff and it's it's kind of cool to be able to you know be do stuff on your own I, I, you must have a lot of help though with caregivers do you have someone around 24 7 i do have a live-in caregiver okay who's, that's uh, good. Always is it was it easy to find someone during the pandemic or is it family? So I know in some yeah. Luckily, I had everything set up before mm -hmm. pandemic started. That's so good. That's uh, nice. yeah, yeah. I know a lot of people with disability, with spinal cord injuries during the pandemic. They're like, I can't find anybody. But that's why I'm glad that you're 
Doing so good. All right. Well, thank you for sharing, Peter. You know, I, I, when I saw that you were gaining some arm movement at your level, I thought this would be a really good story to share. A lot of people out there don't even think that that nerve transfer would probably be something they could do at your level. So I think that's really cool. So thank you. You're <laughs> and yeah. And if anyone has any questions, they can just reach out to you over Instagram, right? Yeah. Yeah. Of course. Okay. Thank you so much. Have a good one. Okay. You're welcome. All right. See ya. Bye. Bye.